Hello everyone. Welcome to PCCL. The intensity of the current depends on the generator, here a battery, and on what is in the circuit. If the component's sole function is to resist the passage of current, this is called an ohmic conductor. The associated physical quantity is resistance, which is measured in ohms. If the resistance is adjustable, as is the case here, we speak of a rheostat, and, if it is smaller, we speak of a potentiometer. What I wanted to show you is that the more the resistance increases, the more the intensity decreases. Here, we have an intensity in milliamps since the range is in milliamps. So, if the resistance is very high, we will have a very low intensity. Each resistance has its own characteristic curve, which, as its name suggests, characterizes it. That is to say that it is a bit like its identity card. So if we have a resistance of 67 ohms, as shown here at the bottom, we have a curve here that tells us that at a certain voltage, the resistance will react to let a certain intensity pass. If I vary the resistance, the curve varies. Each resistance has its own curve, e its own response. The brightness of a bulb depends on the intensity of the current flowing through it. In this assembly, if we place a resistor in series with a bulb which itself already resists the passage of current, we can see that by increasing the resistance, the brightness weakens and as we have already seen that is due to the fact that the intensity decreases by so that the bulb no longer shines. I suggest that you draw the characteristic curve of two of these ohmic conductors. Maybe start with this one. To draw the characteristic curve of the resistor which is at the bottom there. The most practical is to use a power supply which can generate several different voltages in order to find the coordinates of several points. So by activating the power supply here, which goes from 0 to 12 volts, I can vary the voltage here and see the current response given by the ammeter. I'll be quick because the resistor can heat up beyond bearable. So, starting from 0, 0, zero will be a point on the curve. I now suggest you go to whole numbers. This is what we do when possible, for the simple reason that we can easily place the points. So 2 volts. The response is 20 milliamperes. If I go to another integer, say 4, the answer is 40 milliamperes. We already have the intuition that there is proportionality. We saw it at the beginning of the video but it looks like it. So 6 volts gives 60 milliampers here. And finally, if I go to 10, I will have 100 milliampers. I place the points. This tells me that 5 and 1 are in a relationship of proportionality. The coefficient of proportionality, attention, when I is in amperes, the coefficient of proportionality here is 100. Because when I divide V by I, that is to say 10 divided by 0 0.1 that makes 100 ohms. Be careful there is milliamps, that makes 0 0.1 ampere. 100 is the coefficient of proportionality and it is this which is called the resistance of the ohmic conductor. 100 ohms. We will practice another time with this ohmic conductor. Here is the resistor with its three yellow, purple and black rings. We will choose integer values for the voltage. So in milliamps we have 42.6 for 2 volts. If I choose another integer value, 4 volts, I will have 85.1. If I choose another integer value for V, 6 volts, 127.7. And finally choose 10 volts. The response in milliamps is 212.8.
voltage equals resistance times current. Again, voltage is a linear function of the current. But the coefficient is different. This characteristic tells us here that the coefficient of proportionality is equal to 47, on condition, it is recalled here, that I is expressed in amps. So here we do not have 212.8 amps, it's huge, we got 0.2128 ampere. And, by doing 10 divided by 0.2128, we find 47 ohms. That's it for this video. Thank you.